Good morning. We're here at the, the, the <laughs> Hebridean Room of the British Society for Rheumatology. Mm -hmm. And I'm um, Jihit, and uh, my name is Marwan Bukhari. Um, I'm taking on the job of the incoming editor in chief of Rheumatology. And I'm here interviewing the outgoing, um, mm -hmm. uh, the outgoing editor in chief of the journal, uh, Professor Van La. So, yeah, uh, welcome and thanks for doing this. So, tell me a bit about what the last five years have been like. You, you two finished the job at the end of the year or January, so. Yes, yes. Um, in a way, it's a bit unfortunate. I have to step down, but uh, so are the rules, and I think the rules are good. Um, which means I really enjoyed it. This was a, a special experience for me, something new, um, something different from the daily job we normally do. And um, so you, you get exposure to a completely different uh, um, field um, and, and also insight in how journals are run. So it's been a fantastic experience and I'm really very grateful um, that I've been able to do this. Okay. And so how, what's your perspective? How do you think things have changed at all? Yeah, I think um, things have changed. Um, um, we we uh, intentionally uh, changed things. So we did um, focus on the online presence of the journal, for example. Um, we've noticed that um, young colleagues use mobile devo devices far more than the older generation does. So we've in ha invested heavily in, in for example, a social media presence uh, with Twitter. Um, and we've also um, uh, set up an open access journal, the um, RAP. Um, um, another reason for that was that we got too many papers and, and also had to disappoint too many authors that we felt, you know, we really need to uh, make sure we, um, uh, we, we have something else for these authors to submit their papers to. Um, so yeah, I think the digital revolution, uh, we're, we're still in the midst of it and, and you all um, also have to, to deal with that and, and make sure that um, we keep pace with these um, uh, events. So do you think that with the advent of things like Altmetrics and Publons where you have actually not just the online presence of the paper and the citation, but also how much people are talking about it in other places. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because I, I, I also noticed in my own university that um, just citations or usage of papers by peers is, is not regarded as sufficient anymore. So society, in a way, uh, wants uh, to, to see um, the research papers in, in a way be translated into the open and and, and, and knowledge be uh, dispersed into society and and, and peplons and old metrics are a kind of surrogate measure of societal use of, of research so it's it's not used in uh, rankings of universities still or yet um, but but I can see a movement that this will slowly gain popularity and going back to sort of like the five years of the journal, you, you've had quite a few editor's choices, etc. Do you think that there's a few that stick in your mind that you think, well, that was a good paper that I think came our way? Um, I, I must say, the, the, so the editor's choice is, is that's, that's really the editor's choice, right? So as an editor, you pick the papers that will be published and, um, and your top favourite will be named editor's choice each month. And I've always tried to uh, pick papers where I thought this will have greatest impact on, on rheumatological practice or will be of greatest interest for rheumatologists. Um, and I must say that uh, I can't pick a single one. There, there have been so many papers that, that I think were really um, gems and, and kind of uh, cherries on the cake. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of the uh, many BSR guidelines that, that we published, um, you know, the, the recent ones on gout, I think is, uh, is a very important one because, you know, gout, uh, although it's an easy to deal with disease for rheumatologists, the outcomes of patients are still poor and there's still, there's still many issues between, you know, communication between first line and second line um, and doctors uh, which affect the outcome of gout patients so um, even though it's a simple disease simple to treat it's still very important that we have uh, solid guidelines for that 
and uh, obviously NICE have accredited the British Society for Mythology guidelines, so it is, you know, they're sort of like badged to an extent with, with a fairly good one. And there's quite a lot of readership of the yeah. guidelines across the world. Yes, yes, yes. I, th I think the, the main reason why the VSR guidelines are so well read and, and cited is because they are, um, first of all, meticulous and they are uh, and, and rigorous, but they are also very practical. Um, some other guidelines are seem to be a kind of a, um, you know a, a political consensus statement rather than a truly practical uh, guideline that rheumatologists can use in daily practice. So I think the BSI guidelines, in my view, are, are really helpful because they they guide clinicians uh, treat their patients yeah, rather than just have overarching principles. Rather than and, uh, yeah. overarching principles or consensus statements, which which is always kind of you know, it means that you can which doesn't allow you to to go into details. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's been recently, for example, there's the biologic DMARD ones that have just been published, and we'll probably do a podcast about those. Mm -hmm. I think they're, they're, they're a good example of that. Mm. So, so that's looking back over the last five years. Mm. So what do you think the future will be? What, what advice would you give me? Mm. Well, I, I think my, my one line advice would be uh, be creative and adaptive. And with that, I mean that you, know, you have to kind of uh, develop uh, an overview of the field. And, and see what's happening and, and, and also where you know the, the direction of travel of the specialty and I think that's key in kind of picking up early developments and, and also um, liaising with um, authors or colleagues who work in that particular area so you can kind of catch studies early on I, I think that's that's really critical so so be innovative creative and and, and you know um, don't don't kind of set a course for ten years, which will you'll not be able yeah. to maintain, and you have to uh, adapt to the circumstances. More well, things will change, and treatments will change. That's we'll right. That's right. That, yes. So. Yeah. And the science will go. Well, yeah. thank you very much. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs>